Today, we're gonna to talk about my 40 gallon aquarium. So I got this aquarium sometime back in mid-March of 2019, and I paid 300 bucks for it, for the tank, the stand, and the sump. Uh, somebody just really needed some money pretty bad, and they broke down their tank and sold it uh, to one of my friends, and my friend said, hey, I got a good tank for you, so I went ahead and got it. The tank is 40 gallons, so the tank is 24 inches wide, 20 inches front to back, and 20 inches tall. Uh, it came with this overflow uh, that I needed to make a lid with it, so I took my table saw and made a lid for it. The overflow has a one inch drilled hole on the bottom, as well as a three quarter inch hole. The stand is a plywood stand just your standard cheap plywood stand. Um, I did have to replace these hinges whenever I got it because they were just all nasty and, and just rusted and I was just afraid that, you know, they would just ruin this wood. So I went ahead and took care of that pretty quick. The stand is 24 inches by 20 inches and it is 36 inches tall. The sump is a acrylic sump by Trigger Systems. I think it's the Crystal Crystal series or something like that. I'm not exactly 100% sure. The sump is 20 inches by 12 inches by 15 inches tall. So this year, I went ahead and purchased a Radeon XR30 Pro, the Gen 4 version, and I absolutely love this light. At first I had it on with the, the hanging kit and I just really didn't like it. So I went ahead and bought the the little arm that that mounts onto the back of the tank, and I really love this thing. I mean, it, it's so nice, and it's just it's so much better than any kind of hanging light, in my opinion. I run the Radions at the AB Plus Spectrum at 30%. The lights come on at 3 p.m. and go off at 10 p.m. And during the last hour, you know, I have it just on all blues. That way I can put my little orange glasses on or you know, look at some coral and just kind of geek out at that. Uh, I've also got a MP40 on the tank for the wave maker. And you can see it's not very powerful. It's it goes to I want to say like the third or fourth bar and it's doing the the standard wave motion that you know everybody uses on these these pumps. I've also got the Apex here as you can see. I've got the the old model cuz I'm cheap and I just haven't upgraded to the to the new model yet. Now if I ever do get a Triton I'll definitely upgrade, you know, to the new model, obviously, you know, in order so I can use the, I'm sorry, not the Triton, the Trident. Um, I'm also using the temp and pH probe just for the Apex. I don't really use the salinity probe. I just use my, my refractometer for that. It's more accurate in my opinion. I've never really been able to dial in the salinity probe for the Apex, which kind of sucks, honestly, because it is a good tool, but it just doesn't work for me. I've also got a couple of older uh, Zen Reef frag racks on here. This side is kind of my high expensive corals, I guess you could say. I've got SPS, I've got a couple of bounce mushrooms, and just, well, I also have some cheap uh, Nirvana Zoas or Pallies, whatever you want to call them, so I guess you can't really call it the expensive side. Um, and on the other side, I have all my, my Zoas mainly, uh, with the exception of I got a couple of mushrooms on here as well. Oh yeah, and the actual Apex Pro Holder. And that's pretty much what's just in the actual tank itself. Now let's take a look at what's under the cabinet in the sump. So starting where the water comes out, I've got these little PVC fittings that screw into each other and that way I can just remove it really easily whenever I want to change out the filter socks. I've got this filter sponge here that is basically for the biological filtration and to kind of populate my bacteria in the tank. I always keep these in my tank just in case I ever need to, you know, start up a brand new tank or a QT tank. It can be pretty much an instant cycle. Uh, next, I've got this Bubble Magus Curve 5 skimmer which is doing awesome and yeah I need to clean that cup up pretty it's pretty nasty right now the heater you see here is a Finex 150 watt heater it's the it's the model that has the 
LED little module on it that you can adjust it. It's not the, you know, straight to the Apex version. I, I'm not really too crazy about that one. You never know if it can go bad or not. And you can see my return pump back there. It's a pretty small return pump. It's actually a MaxiJet 1200 or a, a Cobalt 1200. I originally set this pump up just to kind of get this tank started and going, and then I plan to change it out with one of my j pumps, the a larger model, but it's doing well, and I really don't have any reason to change it, so I just keep it in there. And lighting up the entire sump is a AI Prime, the non-HD version. I just had this thing sitting around, so I was like, you know, I might as well put this thing to use, and I just mounted it to the, to the back of the the stand there and I put a zip tie up here and a little hanging or you know a ceiling mount that you kind of hang your plants with and it just works and this black hose going into here is my DIY ATO little contraption and there's my water container right there it's just basically a pump that goes to the black hose and then I control it with a Wi-Fi plug I actually have the Neptune ATK module and pump and all that good stuff, but I'm just, I've got a case of the Lars, you know, the lazy ass reefer syndrome, and I just haven't had a time to hook it up yet. And this sump, I've only actually cleaned it once since I've had it. I started a refugium and the refugium pretty much died. All the algae was pretty nasty. It started collecting a lot of detritus. So I've only cleaned it once in the time that I've had it. And I've got these Marine Pure spears in here just for some more biological filtration. They also just basically serve the purpose to hold these little trays down because when I don't have anything holding them down, they just float and tumble. I used to have a full box of these Marine Pure spears in the return section of my sump here, but my nitrates, you know, went from 20 to right around 2 ppm within a month or so. So I went ahead and took those out and just I'm working on getting my nitrates back up to roughly around 5 to 10 ppm and you can also see my little makeshift dosing containers there they're just some old Fritzheim 9 containers uh, and now they're just used for alkalinity and calcium I also have these bulky supply dosers here I really love these things I mean these things are solid and they're just accurate and if you want to see a video on how I set these up and mounted them and calibrate them Go ahead and tap on the top right hand corner of your screen right now. These are my Ocellaris clownfish that these were my actual first saltwater fish that I got back in 2016, early, yeah, early 2016. I keep them down here in the sump just because they used to be in a breeding setup that I had and I'm still kind of trying to breed them. I really hope they breed one of these days, but I just can't get rid of them. I mean, they're my first fish, so, you know, what are you going to do? And these are my snow Caso clownfish. I got these probably about two years ago, and they were just little tiny things. I mean, they were probably three-quarter of an inch or an inch. And now, you know, they're in the main display because, I mean, obviously they look a lot better than just plain oscillaris. And I also have a file fish. You can see him right there just hiding in between the, the hammers there. He's done a really good job at getting rid of all my aptasia. When I first started the tank up, I had... A small Aptasia outbreak, and he did a really good job cleaning that up. I, I don't see any Aptasia anywhere in this tank anymore. He hasn't, or I haven't noticed him nipping at any coral or trying to eat coral or coral disappearing, but I did notice this. My A-can down here, as soon as I put it in, it was doing good, and it just, you know, it didn't do too well. Also, this A-can back here, this is my second tester A-can. And I'm not sure if this file fish has actually been eating this or what's going on because it used to be a lot fluffier and now it just, it looks like crap. So I don't know. If I can't have acans and I'm able to keep a file fish, I just won't have acans. So I feed the fish every other day, uh, either mysis or LRS refrenzy. And then every Saturday, I go ahead and feed the corals, uh, refroids from Polyp Lab. My last water change on this tank was actually November 26, 2019, which was just over a month ago. Um, I used to do approximately 30 gallon water changes every month, and then I started to dose the BRS two part and a couple other additives. And every test that I did, you know, 
my tank was pretty much stable. So I'm trying to get to a point to where I don't have to do water changes anymore. Or if I do, then I'll just go ahead and do them just to kind of reset the tank a little bit. But I do want to get to a point to where I don't do any water changes. So let's take a look at some of the corals that I got in here. This tank started off as a euphilia tank or a kind of a mixed reef tank. Then I started to add these zoas here. Uh, I've got my little zoa rock right there. Then, you know, I started to add a couple of anemones just because my fish were actually hosting the, the top right hand corner of my tank and I really didn't like them up there. One, I was afraid they were gonna jump out. And then two, you know, I really didn't like them being all the way up there. You know, they should have been on the reef, I mean, in my opinion. And there's a couple of the other little rainbow anemones there. A little bit later after the enemies, I added a couple torches and there's my dendrophilia there, my channel mascot. And this blasto down here, I've actually had it for about two years roughly. And it started off with about eight heads and now I don't even know how many polyps this thing or heads this thing has. It's 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 crazy. And then this Monty, I actually got it for helping a buddy out, uh, Bees Reef. You can check his channel out. He was breaking down his 265 gallon tank, I believe it was, and taking out all the rocks and the corals. And so I helped him do that one weekend. And he gave me this, you know, just for saying thank you. And I got a OG bounce mushroom here from a frag show, uh, Texas Coral Fest. I bought it for about 300 bucks and now I mean it's been about a month or so and it's already tripled in size I mean it's it's insane and I've also got a orange passion SPS here I got it from North Texas coral which is coloring up really nicely and it's starting to encrust on the plug there's a couple of slimer corals there that I got that are really starting to color up nicely I mean they're green so they really can't color up that much more than just being green in the corner there i've got a candlelight acropora which is my favorite acropora of all times i don't know why it just is <laughs> and there is my little euphilia garden basically all hammers and a couple of frog spawns in there and my zoas here I got some some uh some blood agave some laser lemons purple monsters some rastas uh, hyper jubilees Magicians, Sunny D's, Rainbow Infusions, and Bam Bams. Uh, these are some Gatorades. And these kind of brown looking Zoas are actually some Promethazine Zoas. They look a lot better once they're actually under the blue LEDs. Uh, Utter Chaoses, uh, Recordia, and there's a, I think it's a, called a Uranium Bounce that another buddy gave me he's breaking out his tank and he just said hey dude you want this i was like of course <laughs> and then this guy is a red nebula mushroom that i got from murphy's borough aquatics and it's about five inches across now it's it's insane here's just a top-down view of the tank so the parameters that i'm trying to keep on this tank is the alkalinity 8.5 calcium about 450 it's running between 435 to 450 which i'm fine with that uh, magnesium currently is about 1580 to 1600 which i'm just i'm having trouble getting that a little lower it's i always have trouble with magnesium and i hardly ever dose it my salinity is 1.026 which is spot on it's perfect and the temperature ranges between 78 to 78.5 roughly I'm currently dosing the BRS two-part pharma alkalinity at 10 milliliters and the two-part pharma calcium at 10 milliliters. This is daily. The Red Sea ABCD trace elements, I'm doing one mil of each bottle daily. Microbacter 7, I'm doing between 5 to 10 milliliters daily. And Fritz Zyme 9, I'm also doing 5 to 10 milliliters daily. And last, I'm adding one mil daily of coral amino, and that's all I'm dosing to this tank. So I really hope you enjoyed this tank update and technically its formal introduction to the channel. I've really had a great time growing this tank out. I'm taking it really slow, so 
I'm not really going too crazy with this tank, but I'm really just having a, a good time with this tank and enjoying the hobby versus trying to grow coral out as fast as I can just to sell it to make a little profit here or there. So it's a different kind of journey for me on this tank, which is probably why I'm enjoying this a lot more than any of my other tanks in the past. And please don't forget to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. And also go ahead and hit the notification bell icon and click all. So that way you get notified anytime I upload a future video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.